teams that vault them into a nice position in the Big East. Glad to have you with us on this Sunday, along with my partner, Kyle Delabe. I'm Patrick Reed. We saw a game in this building on Friday, Kyle, that was played at pace between Marquette and St. John's. And a player that really lived up to that pace was Selena Lott with her 34-point output. She led the way for Marquette to a win and come from behind fashion. She's been asked to step up this year for Marquette, and she has done it. Friday night, she was the most impressive she's been so far this season, scoring in a myriad of different ways, from the three-point line, down low around the basket, and from the free throw line. Yeah, her 34 points were third best in the Big East this season, most in league games for any player. Now, as for Seton Hall, they had to play at a high pace as well down in Chicago against DePaul. Good showing for the first three quarters, but didn't walk away with the win, but we did get a look at what Barbara Johnson can do. Versatility, good game for her with 17 points. Yeah, her first double-double of the season for Seton Hall. She stepped right in as a transfer from Ole Miss in the starting lineup for Seton Hall and has been a big part of their success so far this season. Yeah, Barbara Johnson with a team high 12 and a half points in Big East games. She'll be the factor for the Pirates today if they want to get to four and two in league play. Set for the 23rd all-time meeting between Marquette and Seton Hall. Here's how the Golden Eagles line it up. Altia Anderson for Marquette. A breakout effort of her own on Friday night. A career-high 14 points. Kyle, this has been a player who's been relied on defensively. A player who has length in the post. Now finding an offensive stride in a game that featured a lot of offense. It was impressive the way she played offensively. Showed a lot of confidence for a player that hasn't scored a ton in her career to this point for the Golden Eagles. That helped Marquette get to 2-2 two and two in the Big East, 11-4 overall. As for Tony Bozella and his Seton Hall team, the Pirates, we talked about the effort of Barbara Johnson and her double-double. Maya Jackson, a freshman from Wilmington, Ohio, is going to be potentially a game-changing player for Seton Hall. Yeah, Coach Bozella was very high on her. A lot of great freshmen this year, this year in the Big East, including Jackson, shooting an impressive 44% from three-point range this season. It's going to be an interesting matchup of the future of the Big East when you talk about Jackson, when you talk about Jordan King on the other side for Marquette. The Pirates 10-6 and six overall, 3-2 and two in the Big East. Started league play with a couple of wins. They've gone one and two over the last three, including the loss at DePaul on Friday by an 85-68 count against the highest scoring team in the Big East. Well, the Pirates this season have been inconsistent, but it could be one of their best teams, Tony Bozella feels, since that 2016 team that was the last one to get to the NCAA tournament here at Seton Hall. The defense have taken a big step forward so far for the Pirates. They've held teams to under 40 points three times this season, and they have a great mixture of veteran players, freshmen, and then incoming transfers as well. As you know, we've talked about Barbara Johnson and the impact that she has made. They start two freshmen, and they got a couple big time scores now coming off the bench in Lewis and Desiree Elmore, both in double figures on the season. We'll see them soon. Coming off a game for both teams played at high pace. DePaul for Seton Hall Friday. St. John's for Marquette in this building. A 94-85 game, the highest scoring game in the Big East this season. These two have had their share of high scoring games against each other. They're third and fourth in the Big East in scoring average as the Hall wins the opening tip. We see Jack Johnson going right to work. Barbara Johnson coming off her 17 points, 11 rebound performance. And then a little pressure right at the midcourt line by Johnson as well as she gets back into position after that nice play on the offensive end. First possession for Marquette. Lauren Van Clunen, an outstanding night as well on Friday, but Selena Lott was the story, and she's fouled on the arm bar on her way through. Yeah, expect to see a lot of Selena Lott with the ball in her hand. She made a lot happen. Obviously scoring the basketball, but made a number of big time plays passing as well for Marquette in that victory. Maya Jackson with the personal foul, her first. Inbound pass looking for Anderson, deflected away, will stay with Marquette. Yeah, Jackson picking up her first foul. Coach Bazella called her the team's best defender. Shadeen Samuels was there on defense on the baseline. The Big East preseason player of the year has been slowed by injuries. 
Tony Bozella hoping to get around 80%. Maybe better from her as Van Clunen turns and leaves it short in the lane. It's Lot back up. Lot fouled again. Biloxi draws the assignment of Van Clunen, who's been a force so far in Big E's play for Marquette, especially around the basket. Forces the air ball, but Lott was in the right place at the right time. So what Selena Lott did in her game on Friday night is exactly what Coach Megan Duffy wants to see from her. Lott is a player that can pass the basketball. She leads the Big East in assists. She leads in assists in conference play. A two to one assist to turnover ratio but they want her to be that, that Batman-type player that is the focal point offensively. Yeah, she's going to have a high usage rate, it seems like, in Big E's play with her ability to score and pass it for the Golden Eagles. There's a deflection right there. Marquette Sim fans know about her, her defensive prowess and seeing the offense this year. That's what she was given the opportunity to do with an array of scores that Marquette had. This was a program that lost 76% of its scoring from last year, they graduated almost eight and a half thousand points career. A staggering number, but this new look Marquette team has been a good one. It's been a good look for this Seton Hall team. Nice pass inside by Johnson to Samuels. Good one-two punch. Definitely some pressure here early by Seton Hall. An interesting look as they try to use their defense in this one. Anderson inside. Altia Anderson keeps it rolling offensively. Yeah, she's continuing her confident play on the offensive end. A nice setup and a finish. King comes to help out on Park Lane's pass inside, deflected away. Anderson ahead to Lott. What a lead there by Anderson. She put it exactly where Lott needed it to finish with the right-handed layup. Continue to see new elements to the game of Altia Anderson. Who has impressed in conference play. Here's Johnson for three. Got it. Barbara Johnson continues to roll offensively in her own right. She comes ready to play in this one for the Pirates. She has to sort of lead the way offensively. Has to be one of the players for these starters with the big offensive punch coming off the bench. Anderson off the recovery. Lot thought about it from the corner. Now it's King, who's left alone for a moment. King is strong, and it's grabbed by Philoxy. Johnson will lead them once again around the defensive King. Barbara Johnson hangs and hits. That was a nice play by her. A little bit of a stutter step to create some space and then able to finish in the lane for the Pirates. Philoxy with the contact on Van Clunen at the other end. You and I were talking off air, Kyle. We were going to learn a lot about this game in the first five minutes, and what we're learning is that the pace is there. For these teams that had to run on Friday night, and there's Lott off the inbound play. Six points early for Selena Lott. Yeah, Marquette's passing has been one key to their team so far this season. They've been definitely a team in every sense of the word so far this year, especially on the offensive end, assisting on about 70% of baskets this season. Well, that was what Tony Bozella didn't want to see. The Pirates have taken pretty good care of the basketball this season, second fewest turnovers in the Big East. They want to try to turn Marquette over if they can. The Golden Eagles have struggled in that respect. And there's Marquette's first turnover of the game. Again, that's Philoxy down there on the block, guarding Van Clunen, and forcing the turnover. There's a reason why Coach Bozella called her the team's best post defender. She's had a nice run to open up league play, starting in her seventh game of the season. Jackson. We'll wait to see her come to life offensively, but it's been Barbara Johnson's game to start with seven points, three of three. Pass for Philoxy. It's one she'd like to have back as to the front court Spingola. Van Clunen looked to kick it out for a moment. Now will turn the left-hand shot. No, but the rebound there for Anderson. That time it was Samuels guarding Van Clunen, forcing that miss. King in motion. And Jordan King will go to the foul line. Yeah, the cuts, the play off the ball. I think that's what's been really impressive about Marquette so far this season as King Struggling a little bit from the field so far in, in Big East play. 
got to look a little bit closer to the basket and has a chance to get a couple points from the free throw line. Spent some time talking with assistant coach Scott Merritt before the game about Jordan King's progress. And there's a lot put on you when you are the freshman of the year in a league. Nobody's seen you play at this level. They know the track record for King, which was big time scoring in Illinois high school basketball at 2,500 high school points. But they're not asking her to score at that level here at Marquette. They're asking her to do other things and to be the primary ball handler to bring it up floor. Yeah, down the road, that might be the situation, but that's a little bit a ways away for her. The fact is Megan Duffy and her staff really trust King as we get our first look at Alexis Lewis, who's had some big time efforts this season for the Pirates. Some of the big time wins, especially out of conference. There's King, you see that stroke from inside the arc. Yeah. Scoring touches there for King. Lots hands are in the way of Barbara Johnson, but Seton Hall will keep the basketball. Yeah, if you're the coaching staff, you really like that play from King under control, getting the ball on the perimeter, taking a couple dribbles, and really getting about a wide open look from 12 feet. Here's a look at Selena Lott, who turned in the most points we've seen in a league game this year in the Big East at 34. 12 for 18 shooting, four of six from outside three-point range. There's a lane to the bucket on the inside and contact drawn by Desiree Elmore. Elmore certainly going to be a player to watch off the bench for the Pirates. Tough shot for Cameron Taylor. It's rebounded by Femi Funis. A lot trying to feed Taylor down low, but Taylor didn't have the best angle on the shot right there as she checks in for the first time this afternoon. One of the freshmen getting a good amount of playing time for Marquette. See, Tony Bozella, there's a lot of minutes to go around on this team. They don't have one of those 30-minute-plus players. A lot of competition. There are minutes, there are points available out there. There's a foul after Anderson grabbed it. That's against Funis. Yeah, good pressure on Elmore to force that turnover. Which is number five in the foul column for Seton Hall. Number four on the turnover sheets. If we take a look, it was tipped away by Anderson, Anderson out of the hands of Elmore. Looked like Anderson got some help from Taylor on that possession to force that turnover, but chance now for Marquette to really eat a little bit here at the free throw line in the first quarter. Marquette went 19 of 27 at the line here on Friday. Still trying to work that percentage up a little bit. It's below where the team and the coaching staff would probably like it when the year is said and done. Especially if they want to get to the line and they want to get those inside looks. Past Marquette teams would often get to the foul line. Carolyn Keeger wanted to get there 25 times a game. Marquette is a really versatile offensive team. So is Seton Hall as Barbara Johnson is fouled by Lott. That'll be the first on Selena Lott. Yeah, and these are the kind of assignments that Lott is used to in her career at, at Marquette, playing a, a player that can create like Johnson off the bounce. Tony Bozella loves the hard work that Barbara Johnson has put in to get to where she is. Yeah, he said she was one of the best people that she's coached in, in his long coaching career. So the redshirt senior out of Toronto gets one of the two. 11-10 Marquette. So we have 5.05 remaining in the first quarter, and that's a turnover that Megan Duffy can't see, but her freshman Norell Lubo makes. Lubo. Made an impact on Friday's game. Lubo was a really nice player off the bench. Athletic for her age as a freshman and well built. Will certainly be a factor. Johnson has some space from the elbow. Her shot is strong. Van Clunen got a piece of it. And now Lott is on the run out to Spingola, who had a chance and now will pop it from the right side. Johnson tries to track it down. It will stay with Marquette. That'll give us a chance to regroup inside the Al McGuire Center here in Milwaukee. We're running on this Sunday afternoon. Marquette 
with a one-point lead on Seton Hall, first quarter. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope, we believe, and we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. There's a look into the Marquette strategy session as the Golden Eagles have a one-point lead and look for their second win of the weekend. Two and two start to league play for the Golden Eagles, playing the first three games away from home. Now finally getting a chance to come back home and a chance to build on what was a good non-conference stretch against tough competition to vault them near the top 30 in the RPI. So setting the table for a good Big East season. We saw the most points scored in a Big East game from Megan Duffy's team on Friday. She's going to be a more offensively inclined coach as she gets the personnel in she wants, but said that, Kyle, this year the staff has set the energy tone. The players have given it right back, and we're seeing that energy here today on this Sunday. Yeah, and I think one of the things that really stands out for this team is the ability for a number of different players to step up on the offensive end, and everybody knows that they got to bring it on the defensive end every time they're out there. So the expectations are, are the same for, for all the players, no matter how much playing time you're getting. Spingola, left side three, that is off. Marquette's been about middle of the pack, both offensively and defensively this season. Fourth in the league in scoring, fifth in the league in points allowed. They have been the best rebounding team, and they've been the best team sharing the basketball. As Kyle alluded to, 71% of their field goals have had assists on them. And who's turning inside is Elmore. We get to see Desiree Elmore at the line for the first time. Seton Hall team has some good foul shooters, including Elmore. And she'll get her first trip here on the foul by Spingola. Don't have a lot of teams that can bring somebody off the bench like Elmore and score 15 points per game. So that was the strategy behind why she is developing into a uh, six-man type role for Seton Hall at this point in the year. Conditioning is where it needs to be for Elmore, who came from Syracuse injured to Seton Hall. And now has grown into her role, and certainly there's an argument for her to be in the starting five. And of course, things change. That may change as we're only in Big East game number six for the Hall, number five for Marquette. Quarter pole of the league play is Taylor will fire it and touch the rim and touch it down. A real soft touch on that baseline one. Samuels on the drive. Armbar comes before Samuels gets to the bucket. It'll be Lauren Van Clunen's first. Van Clunen defending a not quite 100% Shadeen Samuels, but showing nice drive there. She tries to explode to the bucket. Yeah, Samuels still brings a ton to the table for Seton Hall, preseason player of the year 
in the conference. Still scoring in double figures this year. Offensive foul for the Pirates. We'll turn it over for the fifth time. It's the second on Funis. Here's a look at Taylor. Nine points against St. John's. And the Hall's going to pressure Marquette here. Trouble for Lubo, swiped away. Park Lane around the contact and scores. Lauren Park Lane with her first points. And they're going to put this press to work as King breaks it to an open lot who lets the defense go by on the three and connects. It's an impressive turn of events for Marquette, giving up an easy basket off of a turnover. More pressure, but been able to get a wide open look. Baseline J is short for Funes. The follow from Samuels, no. Taylor has it and will settle it for Marquette. Taylor, see a little bit more of her offensive game, but she's long on that short jumper. Taylor's a work in progress offensively, but they are really excited about her future. Samuels trying to turn on King. Well defended by King there. It's the taller Samuels. Yeah, one of the keys to Marquette's success so far this year, any of the players that come out on the floor, no matter if they're averaging 10, 15 minutes or 30 minutes a game, they're going to put up a shot if the opportunity presents itself. And the, the coaching staff has to be happy with the confidence all the players are showing offensively. Travel on the drive by Elmore. That's turnover number six. Yeah, those are starting to stack up here for Seton Hall in this first quarter. Lubo sees King. King working through Johnson. Norell Lubo quieting things down for Marquette. Golden Eagles, 6 of 13 from the floor. King of a bounce pass. That's one she wants back. On the run. Johnson right side on King. Draws the contact. It's a blocking foul and a good bucket for Barbara Johnson. Yeah, that all started on the defensive end for Seton Hall, getting into the passing lane and going out and running in transition. King tried to get back, wasn't quite set. It's outside of the arc and was sideways to Barbara Johnson. And yeah, that's the right call in that situation as we took a look at that right there is just not in the right spot in enough time for King and Johnson continues to have a great effort in the early going here for Seton Hall. She's got 11 of the team's 17 points. Yeah, reminiscent of her game on Friday at DePaul. Big first quarter with Megan Duffy looking on and looking at Narelle Lubo in trouble. They're gonna call a foul right at the midcourt line. Some consternation from both head coaches. Tom Danaher, Karen Pence, Crystal Apollanis, our officials this afternoon. Screws and Big East games do a nice job. We saw that on display in this building on Friday. Seven fouls for Seton Hall, a pair of players with two. Lauren Park Lane and Femi Funis, Marquette. Five fouls, nobody with more than one. Lubo off the miss. Shot clock at 20 for Lott for three from the left side. Tapped out, Lott will get a second chance. Will drive, Van Clunen had it swiped away by Johnson. It's a foul. And Barbara Johnson, can't believe that. Good bounces there for Marquette, and now a chance for Van Clunen at the free throw line to give Marquette back the lead after the foul was committed. We talk about good foul shooters in this game. Lauren Van Clunen right there, 89% for the season. It's her first point of the contest for the Golden Eagles. She struggled a bit with the tough post defense by Seton Hall in this one. Coming off 19 against St. John's Friday. 
So Van Cluden gives Marquette a two-point lead. Lauren Park Lane, the freshman who handles the basketball primarily for Seton Hall. Johnson sees her. So sees some help in the lane from Elmore, but nothing there. Samuels works in. Elmore looking for a seam. It goes off the hand of Samuels. Five to shoot. Trouble for the Pirates. Midcourt Samuels will pick it back up. Park Lane sees it. Fires. Buzzer. No. Samuels grabs it back up. Check that Philoxy. And she'll go to the line for two. Kind of a weird possession there for, for Seton Hall. A little lackadaisical with the basketball near the, near the top of the key, but still ending up with a couple free throw attempts. They have to be happy with that overall, but I think they just are going to be looking to kind of clean things up as they inch towards the second quarter here. Front end for Philoxy. Came in 10 of 19 at the line this season. Her MO is rebounding. She's had five double-figure rebounding games this season. And gets one of two. Yeah, where Marquette had the height advantage Friday, that's definitely not the case in this one against Seton Hall. Yeah, that's one of the areas of the game that Marquette had a key on. Just to contain the Pirates in the post. They rebound the ball. Although Marquette is the best rebounding team in the Big East. They want to stick to what they do well. Inside, Philoxy this time gets it to fall. Good feed by Elmore. Great play by the Pirates as they go on top. Marquette doing a good job breaking the press out to the right side for a lot in and outs. They've handled that well for the most part in this game. Now Johnson on the take, stops, pops, and hits. Barbara Johnson having a game in the first quarter. 13 points for her. Marquette missing their last four field goals. 45 ticks. We see Chloe Murata for the first time. Van Cluden's shot is off. Tony Bozella indicating that Maya Jackson can settle things here. 10 seconds different shot clock, game clock in our opening quarter in Milwaukee. Handoff for Johnson a little bit off. Driving is Elmore. Elmore has an open lane to the buckets. Now ahead, Spingola will fire three left side, in and out. Rims haven't been friendly for Marquette at home. Here comes Jackson, she sees the clock. Jackson sees an opening, lets the shot fly maybe a little early. And that will send us to the end of quarter number one. Desiree Elmore's been an impact off the bench. We see her playing some defense on Jordan King. It's the Hall with a five point lead at the end of one. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. All right, we got to be all in. All in, all right? But we got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Together. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now.
we're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope, we believe, and we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Today's game for Tony Bozella's team really represents an opportunity coming off a loss at DePaul Friday. So the commitment has been good. This team has put forth the effort this season. There's competition. There's still more competition to be had. He's been rolling with some different looks, some different lineups. Trying to find what he likes and likes what he sees early. And we like what we see from Altia Anderson to start quarter number two. Continuing to progress offensively before our very eyes this weekend. And that's not an easy player to kind of put that move up against in Philoxy. He's Kyle Delabe. I'm Patrick Reed, along with our fine Big East crew in Milwaukee inside the Al McGuire Center. Marquette looks for its second win of the weekend, but they've got some work to do. Trailed by five at the end of the first quarter. Anderson with another steal there for the Golden Eagles running the break with King who draws the foul as King starting to make some strides with her offensive play in the Big East in the early going of this game. Just under 10 points per game for King. King part of a recruiting class here at Marquette that stayed for Coach Duffy. I'm going to go out on a limb here, say Anderson already has a career high in a steal. She has four steals in 10 plus minutes. When you look at what these teams do well defensively in the bigger picture, Seton Hall is the team that will steal the basketball. Second in the league and steals at just under 11 per game. Marquette defends the rim as well as any team in the league at just over four. I mentioned Altia Anderson, Kyle. She's been a big part. Well, that rim defense from Marquette defending Elmore on the inside. Samuels' first try won't go. Her second try is blocked by Anderson. The top shot swatters in the Big East is Anderson. There's King, the long three. And Samuels the carom. Samuels hitting the accelerator, trying to get around King. It'll be Marquette basketball. And that's another turnover for Seton Hall as they're up to seven turnovers in this one. It was Lott that poked it away from behind Samuels and she couldn't recover. So Selena Lott sticking to her defensive MO when offensively things have just been going her way. Fast start for Lott, nine points in the opening quarter on three of five shooting, but none better than Barbara Johnson. Johnson defending on King as Anderson is found. Bounce pass for Spingola, who will lay it in. And a good job by King by keeping her composure in that sort of double team situation. She knew someone had to be open, and it got down to Spingola for the easy one. A really good break there by Marquette. They've handled the pressure well in this game. They've only turned it over four times. Johnson on the wing with 10 to shoot. Will go right to the paint, hop, step, and a jump and a score for Barbara Johnson. She continues to be on fire. She's got 15 points. And Tony Bozella wants to slow things down just a touch and talk it over with his team. The Hall with a one-point lead. Barbara Johnson with a great start on Sunday afternoon. All right, we got to be all in, all in, all right? We got to make sure we play with great passion. 
you have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe. And we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. slash WBB tickets. We're still a ways off, but in this league this season, we're seeing depth, we're seeing parity, we're seeing good basketball night in, night out. We're seeing high scoring. It's exactly what you want to see. We're seeing teams like Seton Hall, which might be on the outside looking into an NCAA bid if you're looking at the national picture right now, but there's no reason to think that their quality of play can't maybe get them into position. Yeah, they definitely have the ability to make a run at the NCAA tournament this year, but this is going to be a big one for them, trying to get a, a nice road to victory in conference and pad their resume. Marquette moving the basketball well, but can't get the Anderson finish. All with a one-point lead coming out of the timeout. Park Lane tried to go behind her back and was caught. And she'll turn it over. Things were moving a little bit too quickly there for the freshman trying to set up her teammate. Lob across King. King eyes lot left side. Three-pointer on the way. That's Shorts. Van Clunen, hard collision on the inside on Elmore to try to get that rebound. That'll be Van Clunen's second foul. When you talk about teams in position for the postseason at an early point, Marquette is certainly an interesting case. In the RPI, they sit in the 30 range entering play today. Yeah, they really did a nice job with the non-conference schedule to, to build that number up to help them out. Remember, Marquette was picked ninth out of 10 in the Big East preseason poll as Samuel shot is in and out. The rebound by Johnson back up. Johnson with a second chance, throws it along the baseline. It'll be Marquette basketball. And Johnson with a lot of effort there. Not the result she wants as she'll go to the bench. So look at Jasmine Smith who will come onto the floor. And the big start for Johnson with 15 points. But now, who's going to step up for Seton Hall? Who's going to take that scoring away as he's on the bench? Right move by Spingola, wrong result. Taylor's back up with it and scores on the right side. Never any hesitation from Taylor. You really have to be impressed with the way the freshman goes out there and just tries to make things happen offensively for Marquette. Talk about that non-conference, Kyle. That was really an area I think where Cameron Taylor got a chance to build and get to this point as Park Lane drives on King. Jordan King has been outstanding defensively in this game. Yeah, that's a hard thing to do as a freshman. 
playing as a perimeter player in this league on the defensive end. Travel for Spingola, turnover number five for Marquette. Yeah, doing pretty good in that area so far. Seton Hall is in double figures with 10 turnovers. So Marquette's feeling pretty decent the way things look in that category. Holding on to a slim lead though. But it has slowed down in this second quarter so far. 10 combined points, Marquette has scored eight of them. Teams were flying high. Out of the opening tip, offensive foul on Seton Hall. That'll be Elmore's first and the 10th turnover for the Pirates. Good position there for King is Patrick, you just mentioned her defense and that's a big time play as a, as a guard taking a charge on that point in the floor. It's not an easy thing to do. You know the contact's coming, you just gotta stay there and take it. Can't put that on the stat sheet, but you know it's good, it's a winning play. Anderson was trapped in, Spingola has pressure around her. It'll be a turnover on the three second violation for Marquette's. Well, they must have been looking for that. You don't see too many three second calls these days. That is a point of emphasis in the women's game this season to look for those three second calls. It's not the NBA, it doesn't result in a foul shot. Inside on the baseline, getting it to go. Smith on the inside. Smith has got a good look here. Good job changing hands in the air. Hasn't been a big time scorer this year for Seton Hall, but you know, with the way Johnson's been able to score and having her on the bench, somebody's got to continue the efforts for the Pirates on that end. She's a junior college transfer from Trinity Valley in Texas, and Tony Bozell has had a lot of success with those transfers. Cameron Taylor hanging, gets it to fall. Make it 29 all. Corner drive, Smith had it deflected away. Second chance, kicked out. Elmore spinning in on Taylor into the contact. Count it, plus one. And a flex for Desiree Elmore. You could see the Seton Hall confidence starting to creep up a little bit here as Elmore making her way through the paint against a couple Marquette players and Taylor and Murata able to finish through the contact. Boy, outstanding touch there with the left hand for Desiree Elmore. She's really worked hard to be in the role that she is in this season. And she'll fire the free throw home to make it a seven point game for her. And a Seton Hall lead extended back to three. Marquette looking for its response. It's Spingola left side, her three-pointer is off today. She's 0 for 4 to start the game. Spingola trying to find the opening in that 2-3 zone that Seton Hall was showing on that possession, but yeah, she's struggled a bit as you mentioned. Interesting decision to show that zone, but Marquette in the game, just one of 10 shooting threes, so a good adjustment. It's a team that shoots the three pretty well in Marquette, 36% for the season. It's been a good Seton Hall team defensively this year. They've really buckled down and taken a team commitment. Marquette, a commitment to draw contact. As Altia Anderson draws the charge. Man. Another offensive foul for the Pirates. It's Alexis Lewis with her first. Watching the way Anderson moves her feet there. There was contact. It was off the ball after the pass. It's kind of a tough call there for Lewis who came down and passed the basketball, but Marquette the benefactor. They'll go to work offensively with Anderson in tights. A quick one for Anderson to put it up with her left hand and finish. She's got six points. One point game. Sunday afternoon in Milwaukee, both teams had high-flying affairs on Friday. They're grinding it out this afternoon as Elmore will take Anderson all the way to the cup and can't roll it home. Oh, heartbreak. But Elmore starting to show off here offensively in the second quarter for Seton Hall. Oh, he touched a crescent moon on the basket, did Elmore. 
It was off the hands of Lewis, will stay with Marquette with 18 to shoot. And this is the kind of battle that we expected. The pace, sometimes it's been up and down, but a lot of good defensive efforts by, by both teams. Lewis off, Biloxi back in. Her length will help Seton Hall defensively. And Marquette has struggled from outside the arc. They'll look for their shots in the paint as lot as it's stripped. It'll stay with 10 to shoot. Now what Marquette did on Friday, I think that was so impressive, Kyle, was they took what the defense was giving them. When St. John's gave them the opportunities in the lane, that's how they made their living in the paint, 52 points. Still looking for what Seton Hall is going to give them today, and it hasn't been much. Pirates have been committed and all in defensively. Another turnover. Starting to pick up a little bit in the second half as that's Seton Hall's goal. Try to get some extra possessions. They've got a one-point lead with three and a half to go in the second quarter. They turn it over. On the run out, Lotts around Elmore scores. No hesitation there by Lott all the way to the cup. Three-point try from Jackson off. Biloxi couldn't reach for it. Murata with the basketball for Marquette. Right side, Lotts needs help. Comes from King. Well, Marquette has hit four of their last five shots. It's a break, which was a bad start to the second quarter. Going inside, there's Anderson. Anderson a little strong, but she's fouled. Boy, Altia Anderson keeps finding herself in position to score, and I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, she has not hesitated when there's chances for her. She's gone right to the basket, or she's you know, put up some shots from a little bit farther out. But you like the way that Marquette was able to attack the, the Seton Hall zone on that possession. You have to do it with good, crisp passing to catch Seton Hall off guard a little bit, and he was able to get a very good look down low. That's what Marquette does, and Anderson going to where the ball is going to be. Six points for Anderson, 0 for 3 at the line. But there's one area Marquette as a team wants to improve on. It's foul shooting at 66% coming in. But Anderson gets one of the two. Shadeen Samuels will step back on. Samuels with a couple of points on one of five shooting, but Samuels has been in the thick of it. Zelmore heads off. See her a little bit of a limp as she crosses midcourt. Again, dealing with hamstring issues, knee issues. When the lower half's not working, hard to get the game working as well. Smith saw Filoxi. She'll get it on the hand back with 13 to shoot. It's Smith carving in, and Anderson draws contact with her. Yeah, Smith really taking this game in her own hands a little bit. Johnson back on the floor for Seton Hall as well. But Smith taking it right to the basket and drawing the contact. God, you see the way that Smith was eyeing the bucket. Tony Bozelli talked about how much of a competitor Jasmine Smith is. Just the ultimate competitor, he said. Well, the offensive game comes into full flourish for the junior from Houston. Things can be really good. Nothing there at the line. Remains a two-point Marquette lead. Tough luck for both teams at the foul line. Selena Lott is Marquette's leading scorer with 11 points. Again, 34 in her game on Friday. Anderson sees her. She'll take the baseline, and the pass goes off the foot of Filoxi. So that will keep the shot clock at 20 and keep the basketball at this end of the floor. Yeah, Anderson leaving the, the floor for Marquette, but another nice pump fake from the free throw line there to continue to show off some different parts of her offense. Ubo in control against Johnson. Taylor trying to show off her post moves. Nice pass inside from Murata, who can't finish. Lubo with the tough board. Held ball will give possession to Seton Hall. And Walker recognized the double team and gave it up there. Well, Seton Hall continues to be stout defensively.
Lauren Park Lane is composed with the basketball. Smith around the screen and good look inside for Elmore. Samuels had the opening as the defense went by. Good look inside for Elmore. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to get all the way to her. Marquette had a, a chance to probably possibly swipe that away, but Samuels' veteran presence is able to, to finish down low. The second field goal make for Samuels with Elmore threading the needle. Foul on the arc. It'll be on Johnson. And for Barbara Johnson, that's her second. Johnson came out running hot, 15 points in the game for her. She finished the opening quarter with 13. 15 foul by Seton Hall, putting Marquette at the free throw line. Frustration there for Tony Bozella, who's team sees an opportunity in front of them today. Both teams have looked good at times. Both teams have had their struggles. But really an interesting one has played out today with both having high-paced games on Friday. Of course, Seton Hall at DePaul, Marquette in this building. That is official Crystal Apollanas looking in for review. Tom Danaher will join her. That second half, it's going to be interesting to see stamina at this point in the year. What do they got on the second uh, game of the weekend? It's always a quick turnaround with the Friday night, Sunday afternoon games in Big East Conference play. So they have a foul shooter set. That is Lott. Tony Bozella doesn't think so, but Lott had initially addressed the foul line. So she'll step there to shoot a pair. Three for three in the game for Selena Lotz. That's 74% for the season coming in. Just a case of a player in Lot that has continued to grow in each of her seasons and improve and evolve and that's really the college level. That's what you're doing. You're developing. It's player development. A lot of great example of that. Two-point lead for Marquette. It's Jackson. And Smith steps in. Mark Lane's not much of a threat to score on the outside. Elmore has it knocked out of her hands and right to Smith. And Marquette couldn't corral it. But Park Lane will see the clock at four. Tried the step back. It's Jackson firing from distance in and out. A couple times Park Lane has done a nice job seeing the clock. Freshmen don't always do that. Well, only, only, the fifth, only the fifth three-point attempt for Seton Hall. Pirates average seven and a half per game. Makes. Inside the final 40 seconds, Murata trapped on the baseline in trouble with 10 to shoot. Taylor has some time and hits. Cameron Taylor composed herself. She's up to eight points. Kind of surprised herself how much time she had to put that one up. No shot clock for the Hall to worry about here. As Lauren Park Lane will direct traffic. Gets the handoff from Samuels. Samuels, maybe hers to take. Runs into Taylor, sees the wing. Smith fires the three, it's long to end half number one in Milwaukee. Seton Hall had a five-point lead at the end of one quarter of play. Marquette has come back to score 19 in the second quarter. Selena Lott, 13 of Marquette's 38 in the opening half. Stand up, stand up stronger. can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. 
I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe. And we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Halftime in Milwaukee, Marquette enjoying a lead at home over Seton Hall. Big East Fast Break is the weekly women's basketball show hosted by Megan Caffrey and Ashley Leotis in New York, breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. That's Eastern Time on Big East's Twitter and YouTube sites. On this week's episode, Megan and Ashley went around the Big East and hit on every team in the fastest three minutes in women's hoops. We definitely had a lot of fun looking around the league to see what was going on within these first four games. Mm -hmm. And so what we put up were we looked around all 10 teams. We came away with our biggest takeaways. We have 18 seconds to break each of these teams down. Ashley, you're on the clock, clock to start us off. All right, we are going to start here with Butler. They got their first conference win this week as they took on Xavier. A big feather in their cap right there. The first one is always one of the toughest. The Bulldogs led for nearly 33 minutes on Saturday and Nida Caceres, the best day of her Butler career with 23.7 rebounds and four steals. Now Creighton has four-time Big East Player of the Week, Jalen Agnew, however, we're gonna look at defense for this J squad. They haven't allowed an opponent to score more than 75 points in a game this season. And yeah, that includes the Blue Demons, who are third in the nation in scoring offense, averaging 86.9 points per game. All right, taking a look at DePaul, the only team left to remain undefeated in conference play. We're going to be taking a look at some of their play a little bit later on. But as for now, they are outscoring every other team in the Big East. Check this, 193 steals in just 15 games. That's leading the conference by far. Well, the Warriors have been struggling to find their identity this season after they graduated a pair of 1,000-point scorers, if you remember Dorothy Adamako and Deanna White. However, Memphis grad transfer Taylor Barnes has been the answer. She's averaging 13.1 points per game, the only Hoya to be averaging in double figures. And over to Marquette, their first Big East win. We were just talking about them. We weren't sure kind of how those pieces were going to fit after losing so many seniors last year, Megan, but playmakers like Lauren Van Clunen, Selena Scott, Jordan King, they are the ones getting the job done. They have a chance to make a big statement this week with St. John's and Seton Hall. And now to Friartown. The Friars are still looking for their first Big East win of the year. Reigning Big East Freshman of the Year, Mary Baskerville, leads the way for the Friars. However, what sticks about out about this team is they are tough underneath the glass, specifically their defensive rebounding. They're first in the conference in defensing boards, averaging 28.7. And over to Seton Hall, a lot of conference play left, but right now the Hall's only conference loss comes to Villanova. And I really like that they had a nice fast start against Georgetown this past weekend, outscoring the Hoyas 23-8 to in that first quarter. That is exactly what you need to win in conference play. Well, the preseason number two St. John's Red Storm is meeting expectations. St. John's is second in the conference in scoring average, right behind DePaul, averaging 75.1 points per game. And a lot of that has to do with the backcourt duo Tiana England and Kadasha Hoppy. However, this offense is versatile. They are just two of four Johnnies averaging in double figures. And Villanova, a very impressive start. 3-1 in conference play. Coming home 2-0 after that New York swing. And I have said it before, Megan, watch out because Kadekin's secrets are coming. In just 14 games, they have combined 
for 533 points. That is insane. Segris is first in the league. At first year head coach Melanie Moore and the Xavier Musketeers, they're still looking for their first Big East win of the season as well. Junior Ariana Gray has 19 career double-doubles, three this season, notching a career high 28 points in the Musketeers. Last game against Butler, she's second in the conference in scoring and a key cog for this Musketeers offense. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Four-point lead for Marquette over Seton Hall at halftime in Milwaukee. Kyle, we take a look at how this breaks down. It was a fast start offensively. Things slowed down a little bit in the second quarter. Marquette found its way to finishing the second quarter, shooting 50% to take that lead on the way to a 19-point second quarter. Definitely a, a game of different types of offensive and defensive flows to this one. You expect teams to be a little bit sluggish after high tempo games on Friday, but I think the opportunity is there for a really exciting second half. And our leading scorers, Barbara Johnson, 15 for Seton Hall. 13 of those came in the opening quarter while Selena Lott with 13 for Marquette coming off a 34 point performance in this building on Friday night. The most for a player in any Big East League game this season. Marquette and Seton Hall enjoying a Sunday afternoon affair in Milwaukee. It's the Golden Eagles with a four-point lead on the Pirates. We're back to take a look at how this half unfolded after this. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe and we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic.
second game of the weekend for both Marquette and Seton Hall. It's the Golden Eagles with a four-point lead on the Pirates. Patrick Reed, Kyle Dolabe with you. And after both teams played high-flying games on Friday, you're not really sure to, what to expect in a game like this, but what we saw was a back-and-forth exciting opening quarter, at least to set the pace for this game this afternoon. And yeah, we expected more of a defensive battle in this one, but the first quarter, their teams were off and running settled a little bit into more of a slower pace in the second quarter as Marquette is able to knock down some shots. Both teams touched over the 10-point mark when it comes to the fast break, taking advantage of turnovers more was Marquette on Seton Hall's miscues for a team that's taken pretty good care of the basketball this season. Marquette's gotten a lot of secondary performances as well to lean on, but of course, Selena Lott, who's been the leader for this team, the leader once again today with her 13 points. And you wonder for a player like that, what kind of performance you're going to get after a 34-point outburst. It's been pretty good for Lott. She shows no signs of slowing down offensively as she hasn't been as efficient as she was on Friday. But still, overall, you have to be happy if you're the Marquette coaching staff with the way she's played on offense. Well, a comeback effort for Marquette in the second quarter has teed us up for what should be an exciting second half in Milwaukee. And we'll have it for you next. Marquette 38, Seton Hall 34 at halftime. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe. And we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Set for the second half in Milwaukee. It's a four-point lead for Marquette as the Golden Eagles try to get to three wins in the Big East. Big East Women's Basketball Championship is just around the corner. The tournament presented by Jeep returns to Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago March 6th through the 9th. All session tickets for the conference championship are on sale now starting at just $50. For tickets, it's BigEast.com slash WBB tickets along with my partner Kyle Delabe and our fine Big East crew in Milwaukee. I'm Patrick Reed. This is Big East Women's Basketball presented by SoFi. When it comes to keys to the game, I think, in the first half for Marquette, Kyle, they stuck to their keys. They performed well. They contained Seton Hall's height in the post and their presence in the post. And they've done a really good job of being in their faces. While for Tony Bozella's team, they really didn't limit Marquette's on the offensive glass or on the glass in general, and they haven't forced them to as many turnovers as I think they would like. Yeah, the turnover breakdown not pretty right now for Seton Hall. 13 turnovers so far. They need to clean things up in this second half if they want a road victory. It's been a pretty clean season for them overall in that category, but not so far this afternoon. They want to finish this road trip the right way. Lots to the corner sees Spingola looking for her first from three and hits. It's got to feel good for Isabel Spingola to connect for the first time. 
Yeah, exactly not how Seton Hall wanted to start this one. Just the second three-pointer of the game for Marquette. Let's see if Barbara Johnson can get it going again. She had 13 in the opening quarter, but stopped by a lot there. Yeah, she's trying to keep the hot hand. Philoxy's reach, but it'll stay with Marquette. And just a couple of possessions so far, but I think these first few possessions are going to say a lot about how this one is going to be decided. The Hall had a five-point lead at the end of the opening quarter. Marquette 19 points in the second to Seton Hall's 10. Where we arrived at a four-point Marquette lead to begin the second half. King will eye it and see Spingola from the corner as she drives in. Spingola off the window. Tap back out. Spingola's second look won't go. You see, trying to develop a more versatile offensive game is Spingola, but not getting the shots to fall in this game. Sometimes that'll happen. Yeah, one thing we haven't talked about a lot is rebounding. Both these teams are really good rebounding teams, and it really hasn't stood out so far in this one for either team. Maya Jackson has her first points of the game. Jackson at 10 and a half per game coming in, who's been one of the go-to players, reaches for that ball, nearly had it picked away. Anderson, straight on jumper, no. We'll see if players like Maya Jackson have their impact on this second half as Park Lane will drive to the baseline. It was tapped by Spingola and saved by Van Clunen. King, the bounce pass to lead lot to the baskets. What a find from Jordan King to Selena Lotz. And then King with the active hand swipes it away. Anderson calmly in, swims. Spingola steps, Lott, three, no. Rebound, back up, Anderson. Timeout, Seton Hall. Marquette with the first seven points of the opening quarter of this third quarter. We'll send it to break in Milwaukee. It's Marquette starting to open it up at home against the Pirates. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe. And we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Marquette will break a tunnel with a nine-point lead on Seton Hall as they have scored seven of the first nine points in the third quarter. Jordan King, Kyle, has come to life in this game as we see her versatility. We see her vision here. You continue to learn when you're a freshman, and I think she's seen the big picture and how she can help this team um, succeed and made a great pass right there right after that possession to set up Lott on a beautiful feed, she was able to get a turnover that led to another bucket for the Golden Eagles. 
Her stat line doesn't tell the full story about how she's been able to play distributing the basketball and doing very well on the defensive end. When she came to the huddle after that timeout, Lott and Lubo both came up to and congratulated to her because she really made some big plays that made things happen for Marquette. She didn't get the baskets, but she made things happen for the Golden Eagles. It was her second personal foul there, and Kyle, I think you're exactly right. The stat line's not going to jump out of you. And for a preseason freshman of the year, you might expect that to be the case, but it doesn't take away from not only what she's done, but how the coaching staff here feels about her, and they're pleased with what they've seen from her. And they've shown ultimate trust in her at the beginning of her career, and that's not something that many freshmen have from their coaches, but Megan Duffy and her staff have shown that trust. Yeah, she's been able to really set up the offense for Marquette, and she's not going to have those those gaudy assist numbers as, as we've mentioned because so many different players for Marquette are going to end up with the, the assist because of the way Marquette passes the basketball around the perimeter and inside around the paint. Well, when you talk about players that could be contenders for Big East Freshman of the Year, Maya Jackson is definitely one that comes to mind. And for Maya coming in, she came in with such a head about her. Two parents in the sports industry, or she's the daughter of a football coach, her mother's an athletic trainer. So a high standard when it comes to team sports set in that household to set the table for her to be successful. And she knows what she needs to do right away. Spingola knows what she needs to do in this quarter as she's starting to turn it on from deep. Her second made three. Yeah, a little bit of danger zone territory here for Seton Hall, now down double digits. It was once a five-point lead. That was at the end of quarter one, but Marquette has been in control since. There's Elmore's shot, and the lefty misses. Spingola, this time left side shorts. She reaches for her own miss. It's the clock back to 20 for Marquette's. You can just see the confidence that Marquette has out on the floor right now, even after a missed shot. Good give for Lott from Taylor. Selena Lott pumping it up to 17. Yeah. Continuing her strong effort offensively. Making her name for Big East Player of the Week honors potentially as Barbara Johnson's three is in and out but has the miss. Now the Pirates need a spark here. Can Elmore give it to him as she backs down Spingola, takes the contact, takes it in, and Taylor will grab the rebound. Possession that leaves Seton Hall wanting there, but Van Clunen will turn it over in the front court for Marquette. Couldn't corral the pass and a turnover. Seton Hall looking for answers right now as Barbara Johnson unable to continue her offensive attack like she did in the first half for Seton Hall as she heads to the bench. Chloe Murata steps on for Marquette. Her stat line wasn't especially full on Friday against St. John's, but her big play came in the fourth quarter. She finished with 5.6 rebounds and put Marquette ahead to stay. Park Lane doesn't get the friendly roll. Lauren Park Lane trying to do her part. And this lot will dribble on Jackson. That's what you'd like to see out of the freshman there, taking the ball to the rack. Taylor with more passing. It'll be an offensive foul against Selena Lott. Yeah, player control foul right there. Just a little bit frazzled going into the lane there and the right call made by the official. Lott doesn't think much of it, but that's her second personal foul. And she continues her dynamic play this weekend. Hall's going to find a bucket here. Lewis's three is off. And then a foul against the Pirates in the backcourt. Yeah, I think if you're Seton Hall, you got to look to Lewis and Elmore for some of that offensive scoring punch when you're down by 12. Yeah, Lewis has definitely provided some of that punch. He had 12 points, made four three-pointers against DePaul Friday. Spark's got to come from somewhere. Morata sees Taylor. Taylor all alone. Marquette in the paint has passed it well. 
And much of the same story for them as it was on Friday, finding points in the lane, now 28 of them. Elmore, short, Murata the rebound. is gonna push the tempo for Marquette and fire the right side three, it's strong. Samuels in for the rebound, there's a foul. We go to the break with Isabel Spingola helping buoy her team. Out to now a big lead on Seton Hall of 14 points. Lot the find, Spingola cans the three. Marquette enjoying a lead at home. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope, we believe, and we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Back in Milwaukee at the Al McGuire Center. Taking a look around the Big East this afternoon, a barn burner in D.C. as Butler took down Georgetown, 47-46. Villanova gets by Xavier, 66-54. And then down in Chicago, DePaul just holds on against St. John's, 74-69 as DePaul remains undefeated. Yeah, that's a 6-0 mark for DePaul following their win over St. John's today. So another perfect weekend for Doug Bruno's squad. We bring you back to Milwaukee with Marquette taking control against Seton Hall at a 14 point lead. We make our way through this third quarter. Taylor has it, trouble with it. Narell Lubo, bring them into the front court. Lubo a pretty impressive game on Friday against St. John's, plus 15 to lead the Golden Eagles as Taylor will finish underneath. Counted plus the foul. Taylor, 12 points, her fourth double digit scoring game of her freshman campaign as she has really shown a lot of confidence and taking the contact there, a chance for a three point opportunity. Foul was the second on Alexis Lewis. So Taylor finishes the three-point play for Megan Duffy's team. Marquette 12 of 17 at the line. And now enjoying a larger lead. 13 points in just 11 minutes for Taylor. Jackson driving on Taylor. Murata the rebound. Marquette cleaning the glass inside, which is what you expect from them. They are the best offensive and defensive rebounding team in the league as Taylor has another. Back-to-back -back possible three-point plays here for Taylor. 
it's impressive for Marquette. They've been able to rebound so well because St. John's is actually right behind Marquette in rebounding. The Big East is going to need to start keying on and talking about Cameron Taylor. Nine points against St. John's last time out. Now sitting on 15 today. And make it 16 with the free throw. It's a 13-0 run for Marquette. They have completely turned this game inside out. And in the third quarter, 20-4 on Seton Hall. This is kind of what happened to Seton Hall in the fourth quarter against DePaul on Friday. Elmore. The look to the corner, Johnson's three-pointer. Can't save him there, but she has the second chance going up. And Johnson won't score it, but she'll go to the line. Murata here late trying to draw that charge against Johnson, and the lid just won't come off right now for Seton Hall as sliding a little bit too late was Murata right there and two free throws on the way for Johnson. She had 15 points all in the first half, trying to get back on the scorecard right now. Struggles continue for Seton Hall now, 9 of 14 at the line. It's been four minutes since they've scored from the free throw line or from the field, anything. Johnson will break the drought, but the Pirates are going to need more. Lubo straight through to Murata, to King. The bounce for Taylor. Taylor on the baseline inside. No, second chance. No, tapped out by Spingola, saved by Lubo. It's been a good afternoon for Jordan King. We'll call her own number. Seton Hall will draw the benefit of the possession over there on the tie-up. Don't have the held ball. The script from Friday for Seton Hall shot 52% in the first quarter, 44% in the second, 30% in the third, 3 of 11 in the fourth. So it was a gradual drop off as the gas kind of let off for the Pirates. And their result there is no different than a lot of games for teams in this league against the Paul, but they were definitely hoping for a better effort today. Jackson, three pointer, right side, good. Maybe the spark comes here for Seton Hall as Jackson knocks down her first three of the game. Yeah, big time shot there for the freshman. Taylor calls for it inside. Lotz finds the seam on the baseline. Taylor, second chance up. And she'll go to the line. Has already had a couple buckets plus the foul in this quarter. She's all right as she gets to her feet. Taylor all over the place so far in this one for Marquette. She already has a, a career high with 16 points. She had 15 a couple of times this year. And she's in position for possibly getting her first double-double. She misses there, but you see that attitude is just effervescent coming through your screen. And just Megan Duffy's a little bit more consternation as she looks in. And Trying to will her team to another win on its home floor where they have not enjoyed a lot of time since the turn of the year. Friday night's game was their first time in this building since December 21st. They started league play on the road. They're trying to go perfect here at home. But it's going to take a little bit more work as Lewis will fire from three and miss. And Lubo grabs the rebound. She's fouled by Elmore. More free throws coming up for Marquette. Tony Bozella's frustration. Every game is an opportunity for his game. He's liked a lot of what he's seen so far and believes this is as good a team as he's had in about four plus years. There's Narell Lubo. Lubo has had a nice under the radar weekend. She misses the first. She's been a valuable cog for Marquette in minutes. Contributions defensively. She can make some really nice plays for Marquette, as we've seen this weekend in important situations. Not a great trip to the line, but doesn't take away from what she's done so far. 
Two minutes to play, third quarter. Marquette 59, Seton Hall 42. Elmore to the corner, Park Lane for three. And Lauren Park Lane's not very involved in the offensive end. She's shooting just 29% for the season from three, but pressures Lubo into a turnover there. Got a little frazzled in the backcourt. Turnover number 11 for Marquette, which they could probably live with at this point, especially with a 17-point lead. You can live with it, certainly considering the kind of pressure that Seton Hall put on in the first half. In the backcourt on Marquette trying to get it across, but hasn't turned into a problem in this game. Elmore off the pump, turning on Taylor, falling away and scores. And Elmore wanted the foul as she points to her elbow. She felt a little contact, but still was able to finish. Well, Got to be careful. Don't want to give Marquette more points than they already have. Elmore's fired up. She's got a motion. Nearly had a swipe away there from Murata. Hall's going to buckle down defensively. Eight to shoot for Lott. Poked away by Elmore. Saved by Murata, who goes crashing into Elmore. Elmore got there late on Chloe Murata. who will go to the line to shoot a pair. Take a look at this, see the contact here. Seton Hall bench looking for an offensive foul. Kind of a bang bang play right there. The foul for Elmore was her third. Check that her fourth. For Seton Hall. Elmore has four. Alexis Lewis has three. Amy Funes, who we haven't seen in the second half, has three as well. Out to a 16-point lead for Marquette. Marquette has led by as many as 20 in this quarter. Get a Hofchild in some trouble. She'll give it up on the held ball. Hofschild not playing too far from home. Product of Prior Lake, Minnesota. Tony Bozell has gone into the Midwest to do some of his recruiting in recent seasons. But primarily, he's composed his rosters of transfer players. They've had a lot of success doing that, especially Division I transfers. Built a welcoming culture as Taylor gets the turn, the hard shot, no, swiped away and controlled by Elmore. Elmore is one of those Division I transfers. She'll dance through, gets fouled by King. And the former Syracuse Orange will go to the line. Johnson as well in her first season at Seton Hall from Ole Miss. Good step through there by Elmore to draw the, draw the foul. Still a lot of time on the clock for Seton Hall if they can continue to get some positive possessions and some productive possessions. They're not a prolific three-point shooting team, but they have a chance as the lefty connects on the first. Elmore last year, 20 minutes per game. Just over 10 points per game, but has really improved her conditioning from last year to this year. Just need those free throws, though. Lott nearly stepped on the mid-court line, throws it away anyway. Big possession here for Seton Hall as we still have a full quarter left. A big uphill battle for the Pirates, but Every possession counts at this point. It's not about what you've done, it's about what you can do. They've got to view it that way. They want to come back from Marquette here in Milwaukee. Elmore looking for space. Park Lane, high arcing, three, count it! And one for Park Lane! You can't do much better than this possible four-point play for Seton Hall as Park Lane didn't hesitate to throw it up from the corner. King with a strong effort to try to block it, so that's what caused the foul. 
And now things get a little bit interesting here. Just the third made three-pointer in the game. Comes from the five foot four Park Lane with the hand of King in her face. She makes it a four-point play. And the Hall will try to buckle down here. Marquette with the basketball and five on the game clock. Murata's in trouble. Mar Murata travels. Marquette turns it over. Murata not the person that Marquette wants in the backcourt to try to break the press in that situation as she dragged her pivot foot and traveled. And now a chance for Seton Hall to get even closer. And they'll inbound on the baseline. So it'll be a little bit tighter here on the inbound play. Getting it to Jackson for three. And that is off at the horn. Seton Hall trying to claw its way back in against Marquette. The Golden Eagles led by as many as 20 in the third quarter in a big third quarter. They'll look to hold serve at home against the Pirates. Back with the fourth after this. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope, we believe, and we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. Marquette with an 11-point lead on Seton Hall, ready to start quarter number four. Kyle Cameron Taylor came to play in the third and helped Marquette to a fast start to the third. Yeah, she's up to 17 points as she got a couple and one situations for Marquette to go along with her eight rebounds. It's been a efficient performance in just about 15 minutes of play. She's been plus 11 so far, so she's been a key when she's been out on the floor for the Golden Eagles. Cameron Taylor had nine of Marquette's 22 points in the third quarter. At one point, the number had really ballooned up for Marquette. They had scored 20 of the first 24 points of the third. Taylor was a big part of that. The Halls made things interesting, especially in the second half of the third quarter. Certainly count the four-point play for Lauren Park Lane as part of that. And it's going to be an entertaining final frame here in Milwaukee in a final quarter of this weekend for both of these teams, along with my partner Kyle Delabe and our fine Big East crew in Milwaukee. I'm Patrick Reed. Maya Jackson will inbound to Lauren Park Lane, whose four-point play may be a spark for Seton Hall. She's not an offensive threat typically, a ball handler, and a pretty good one at that for a freshman. Tapped away by Lubo, who will stay with the Pirates with 17 to shoot. Again, first few possessions of this fourth quarter are going to be big as Seton Hall trying to fight back in this one. Meanwhile, Marquette will try to buckle down on defense. In the top half of the league defensively in just about every category. Elmore spinning on Van Clunen. Good find inside for Samuels, who's fouled from behind by Selena Lott. Samuels was wide open right there. Lot had no other choice really than try to go for the, the block slash foul as was a good look as you described from Elmore setting up her teammate. Hasn't been a big offensive afternoon for Shadeen Samuels. They're trying to get the most they can out of her again. 
Dealing with lower body injuries. They're tough to come back from in season. So now Samuels has six points. Seton Hall makes it a nine point lead from Arquette. Again, it was once up to 20 for the Golden Eagles in the third. Hall had a five point lead after one quarter on Marquette. Marquette turning things around the second. They've had the lead since. Selena Lott's been a big reason why. Morel Lubo's done a lot of the little things this weekend for Marquette, but Lott's that left side for Marquette, 17 points. We'll get it back from Van Clunen. The shot from Lott will miss. Rebound to Van Clunen. She's fouled on the way up. Yeah, Van Clunen still fighting hard for Marquette, only with two points so far in this one. It's been a little bit of a rough go of it for her. First foul for Jasmine Smith. And Clune in a perfect three for three at the line. He's seventh among scorers in Big East games coming in at 17 points per game. Really finding her stride now. That is exactly what Megan Duffy wanted to see from LVK this season. It's impressive what Marquette's been able to do with her just having four points. Jackson carving in. Lubo picks up the foul. Well, Seton Hall is doing anything right now. They're going right at Marquette. Trying to draw contact and shave the deficit down that way. Yeah, Lubo just a bit late trying to draw the charge there. And Seton Hall an opportunity to cut into this lead with the clock stopped. It'll be interesting to see if Seton Hall tries to launch a few more from three-point range. They'd struggled for deep so far in this one, but they do have some players that can knock down shots from the perimeter, including the player that's at the free throw line, Jackson. Fourth in the Big East in three-point shooting percentages, Jackson, she gets them both. Now one of two. Ten point lead for Marquette. Trying to get home win number five. And it's Quiver this weekend. Turning Van Clunen short. Mark Lane will shift it back left. Yeah, Van Clunen still looking for her first field goal of the contest. Nobody there. Maya Jackson says, my bad. But it'll stay. It'll stay with Seton Hall. Last touch by Marquette. Yeah, Seton Hall's offensive strategy continues to be take the ball to the rack as much as possible. 15 on the shot clock. Seton Hall looking for motion with six to shoot. Smith comes in and travels with the basketball. She tried to make a quick cut through the seam. Just a little too fast and Furious is, couldn't get that dribble down quick enough. Taylor, head fake inside for Taylor. And had a run in the third quarter where she was able to draw a couple of and one plays in the paint. Marquette has collected 32 of its 62 total points in the lane. Yeah, really a bust out Big East game here for Taylor. She's definitely going to be looked at a little bit closer moving forward in future Big East contests after other teams get a chance to watch this game on film after their weekend games. Taylor trying to build on what is already a career high with 17 points. Previous best was 15. Tipped by Van Clunen. And settled by Lauren Park Lane. Seton Hall, all they need is a few solid offensive possessions to make this thing real interesting. 
Elmore spinning on Taylor who fell away. Corner, Park Lane dribbles it on the sideline and it's Marquette basketball. Plenty of opportunities there for the Pirates to score. They were right around the hoop and Elmore just couldn't finish for Seton Hall to try to trim it to a single digit game. She was in tight and maybe caught off by the fact that Taylor was lost on the play defensively. Foul the Marquette front court against Seton Hall. It'll be the second on Maya Jackson. Size advantage for Lubo on Park Lane. Hard pass out to Lott. Lott cuts it to the corner. Back inside Taylor, gonna let her go to work on Samuels, turns and fires short. Lubo the rebound on the weak side as it was tapped out by Spingola. Hasn't had to be all Selena Lott in this game. She's had plenty of help. Van Clunen sees nobody to her right. And seven to shoot. Lubo sees it. One to go. Lubo fires. Taylor looking for the rebound. It never drew whim, although Megan Duffy in the Marquette bench saying it did. The officials will gather here. And we'll straighten the call out. Shot clock's at zero. Taylor was going for the rebound. When the buzzer came, we see Lubo shot now. She certainly got it off, and if it drew rim, it barely did. If we see it from another angle, that might give us some more clarity. I'm going to say no on a first glance at these two replays just because the ball, from my eyes, did not change direction. Um, Patrick, how do you see it? I'll say the same. I think Megan Duffy had an interesting look at it because she was right behind Narelle Lubo when she fired the shot. So an inadvertent whistle is ruled. It will be Marquette's possession thanks to the possession arrow which was favoring Marquette. And it we might restart have play with Lott going right to the basket as the lane opened up for Selena Lott. Yeah, it looked like it might have grazed it just slightly. It's a tough call either way. Certainly a tough call for the Pirates to swallow. After those two points, makes it back to 12. Elmore, cross, corner, Jackson fires left side, no. Taylor sees the outlet. Lots going to take it to the baseline, working around Barbara Johnson. Oh, ball possession error will favor Seton Hall. As Johnson got the hand on top of Lotz. Megan Duffy trying to help will her team. She and her coaching staff have brought a high level of energy. They brought the commitment. Her team has responded in kind. And they've responded to an 11-4 record as we have a technical foul that's been whistled. Technical foul assessed to 24 Selena It's Lott's technical foul that's her fourth personal foul. Probably something that Lott said. Lott is not afraid to show her emotions or have her voice heard. It was Johnson who put the hand down. Official Crystal Apollinas was right there to make the call. Lott didn't like it. Lott has some words, and there's the tee. So it'll be two shots for Maya Jackson in the basketball for Seton Hall. Now maybe is the chance for them. They have a chance to cut the deficit down to 10 and have possession. So Megan Duffy gets the explanation. So Jackson gets both. Jackson now three for four at the stripe. Eight points in 27 minutes for Maya Jackson. She'll inbound the basketball. And even more important, four fouls, as you mentioned, on Lott here with still quite a bit of time left. 
Each team with three team fouls. Elmore's in a bit of trouble. Samuels trying to pivot around Van Clunen, standing vertical on her. Tap to Taylor, saved. Yeah, Marquette. Good defensive really, stand for Marquette. Really nice defense there. Surprise, she still tried to force it up. Van Clunen tried to spin it inside for Taylor, picked off by Johnson. Johnson with the numbers ahead for Elmore through the crowd. It was tipped. Nice touch by Lubo or Van Clunen will be Seton Hall basketball. Hasn't really been the cleanest uh, of fourth quarters. Teams not at their most crisp at this point. Elmore will take it in with the left. That's what Elmore was looking for on that last possession. Big points for Jasmine Elmore. She's got 12. Taylor contact. It's a foul against Seton Hall. It'll be the fourth foul against the Pirates of the quarter. Elmore picks it up. That is her fifth. And Elmore is done. And King feeds it into Taylor there and just kind of some weird positioning as. That is really tough for Jasmine Elmore in Seton Hall. Let's check that Desiree Elmore. Now you have Elmore having fouled out of the game after scoring on the last possession. She has 12 points. She's done. Alexis Lewis will step on. And Lewis has shined in some big moments this season, so they'll look for her to do that again. Taylor has been to the line often for Marquette in this game. She came in at 54% from the stripe. Gets one of the two. Now has four for eight. Yeah, Marquette 18 for 30 from the free throw line. So they've, they've left some points out there. It was flashing across. Johnson with the basketball pulls up inside the foul line and connects. First time in a long time for Barbara Johnson. The Hall inching closer. Anderson around the contact. Altia Anderson stays with it. Double, another double figure scoring game for her as she has 11. Altia Anderson, 25 points for the weekend. Jackson, corner, Park Lane steps around the defense. Her baseline shot is long. Had a chance to make it a six point game if she takes that three. Looked like she had some space to put it up, but decided to drive baseline instead and couldn't convert. 10 for Lubo. Tapped away, saved by Johnson. Mark Lane looking to take King inside. Tried the two-handed shot underneath, but was closed into the basket. Mark Lane tried to pop it away from Lubo. Seton Hall really amping up the pressure right now on the defensive end. And a foul with eight on the shot clock. That will send Marquette to the line when we return. Fifth foul for Seton Hall, the quarter. Marquette holding its own on its home floor. Altia Anderson, another double figure effort here today. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you.
What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Marquette 67, Seton Hall 58, 354 remaining in regulation. The Hall has some work to do here today as we take a look at what's ahead for them. They're back home for three straight games. That's going to be a good feeling for Tony Mozella's team. We'll welcome Creighton Providence St. John's. That FS1 affair will be an all-access game, so it'll be a chance for you to hear everything Tony Mozella says, everything oh, Joe Tartamella says. Both those coaches have done it before. As for Marquette, they will be at Butler, be at Xavier, and back here against Georgetown and Villanova for a weekend. That Georgetown game will be an early start, 11.30 a.m. Central Time. They'll welcome a crowd of screaming school students, as they always do, conference play and non-conference play. Get chances to do that because who doesn't want to take a break from school and spend some time at a college basketball game? I think we all do. Wish they had that when I was coming up. A lot of energy will be in the building that day. You know it's it. always fun. You know it. Well, if Marquette can hit foul shots, they can space this one out from what is a 10-point lead right now. So Anderson does a good job to get both. Seton Hall's got some work to do. They've had some big moments, including players like Lauren Park Lane. Here's Jackson's fall away. Grabbed by Anderson. Seton Hall, five fouls in the quarter, so none to give. Lewis trailing King. King will set the offense. Jordan King has had a really nice all-around game for Marquette. As the Golden Eagles trying to close out a perfect weekend in a third straight Big East victory. Johnson knocking it away from Lubo. Johnson can't save it. It'll stay with Marquette. There'll be six on the shot clock. Yeah, it's been a big weekend so far for Marquette as I think coming home has, has been big for this team, taking that next step in their progression. Um, it's, been, it's been quite impressive. They had a tough three-game road trip to start the Big East, and then coming home to play two really good teams as well. Megan Duffy needed a moment to reset the game plan for Marquette with six showing on the shot clock, 3.18 to go in the fourth quarter. Marquette has three timeouts remaining. Seton Hall has two. Yeah, the Pirates with those five fouls. Possession arrow favors Seton Hall. Folks wanting to leave this one and watch the Packers. Playing next, of course, Packers game day, huge in Wisconsin. There's some snow on the ground for that game day as well. Uh, when you go for Seton Hall, when they go home, when they return to Newark International Airport, they'll return to uh, temperatures in the low 60s, high 50s. We were at 30 at game time here in Milwaukee. So that will be welcome for the Pirates. King fires the three and connects. Out of the timeout, can't do it any better than Marquette did. That's got to be a good feeling for King to see one of her three-pointers fall in this contest. Johnson into the open lane. No, tapped by Samuels, saved by Spingola. Mar big three at a big time for Marquette on the last possession. Especially late in the shot clock there. Taylor, the pass through, stays with Marquette. 16 on the shot clock. Officials have talked this over. And they're going to give it to Seton Hall, so 
There was a touch in there. That'll make it Seton Hall basketball. As they'll try to snap a 7-0 Marquette run. More importantly, try to claw into this lead that Marquette has built. Yeah, Seton Hall's missed their last four shots. Johnson again off the take, no. It's been a tough second half for Barbara Johnson after an explosive start. Got to figure out how to get a little bit more consistent play from her. Tony Bozella said she's a little bit streaky. Other things, of course, happening. Hard contact into Taylor from Samuels. Samuels is trying to get a piece of the basketball. Instead, got the body of Taylor. Taylor so with the no fourth for Samuels. Taylor with no fear as she goes to the rack. Back at the, the line again. Well, it's been the theme. I mean, it's it's been a lack of fear. It's been solid, assertive play. And it's put Cameron Taylor in these positions to succeed, especially this afternoon. But it was all building up as the season had gone to this moment. Or Taylor, who's coming out onto the conference stage, 21 points. Throwing a couple of foul shot misses there. It could be more for Cameron Taylor, but already a day to celebrate. Yeah, first double-double in her Marquette career. Defending here as Johnson still can't get it to fall. King wants to tick some seconds off the clock. Lots fouled by Lewis. Fourth foul for Alexis Lewis. And now Lott chance for another 20 point game for her. Impressive the number of free throw attempts that Marquette has so far. They probably wish they hit a few more, but they've gotten there. Well, there's another miss. They've gotten there quite a bit. 21 for 35. In and out. Grabbed by Johnson. Winning by 15 and missing 15 free throws as well. Luxury to have from Marquette. Park Lane misses. Really a workmanlike effort today for Marquette to grind out a victory in what was a fast-paced first quarter. The pace evened out in the second. Marquette took control in the third. Let's Seton Hall back into it a little bit at the end of the third, but they have been all business in the fourth. Able to get to the foul line and while maybe not taking advantage of it, not letting Seton Hall get anything either as the Pirates have shot 2 of 13 in this fourth quarter, 6 of 30 in the half, and that's simply not going to get it done offensively for Seton Hall. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of different ways to look at um, this Marquette team at this point in the season, but I think it's been it, impressive. You know, players like Anderson, Spingola, Van Kloon, and Lott, they had, to, they had to be, you know, bit players. They had to be role players. And now they've been asked to do a lot. So they're sort of asking those new players to do the same thing that they used to do. And it seems to be meshing really well together for, for Marquette. And, and I think that's, that says a lot about um, the types of players that, that Marquette has, that, that no one really um, is, a, is a star, quote unquote. But even, even the top players, they're, they're going to work just as hard as anybody else out on the floor for the Golden Eagles. Well, nobody knew much about this Marquette group coming in again. Pick ninth on the Big East preseason poll, and that'll be something they continue to drive home. Interesting conversation with Tony Bozell before the game. Said Marquette really plays with a chip on its shoulder as a result of that, and maybe not being recognized for what they could be. And of course, preseason polls are only worth what you put into them, but says he really applauds the way that Megan Duffy's gotten the group to play that way. I don't think Megan Duffy views it the same way from Marquette. I think she's just asking for a certain level from her team. And they've been all in. They have committed to what she has asked. 
And they're seeing the results with now a third straight win on the way as Johnson having a rough second half gets one to fall. Yeah, just a huge weekend for the program continuing to move forward. And with their RPI where it is right now, you know, they're definitely in the mix for the NCAA tournament. I know it's only January 12th, and there's a lot of basketball left to play, but they've put themselves in position for a really nice first year under head coach Megan Duffy. Their Kafis will be at the line. Kafis getting some Big East action and playing in her 10th game of the season. Kyle, I think that's going to be interesting to see how the Big East is able to distinguish itself on the national scene with the type of play we see in the league night in, night out, you could certainly make an argument that if Seton Hall gets some results, they, they could be a tournament caliber team. St. John's the same way. Villanova, a part of that as well. Marquette, and thought to be maybe a bubble team at this stage in the game, but it's still early. Our RPI will continue to improve, and Struther on the outlet will get involved. Destiny Struther with Big East points. That's got to be a good feeling coming off the bench and been able to finish right away like that. Good to get this young group of players some valuable seconds of play as Struther looking for another ahead. It's Taylor Valade. How about the freshman for Marquette? Good to see the couple of freshmen getting quick points for Marquette in just a few seconds out on the floor. Good validation for the practice time that you put in day in, day out. Validation in a 12 and four record and what will be three and three in Big East play. We have a stoppage. Nine seconds to play in regulation. Marquette has the basketball. And Taylor Valade will dribble it out in the final seconds to lift Marquette to its third straight win. In Big East play, 81-60 over Seton Hall. We're back. We'll chat it up with Coach Duffy and Cameron Taylor after this from Milwaukee. We gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's bring it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Trust Arena. Get tickets now. different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe and we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. 
right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Eighty-one sixty. Marquette has won its third straight Big East game, defeating Seton Hall to close out a perfect weekend with Cameron Taylor, with Coach Megan Duffy. Cameron, twenty-three points. The emotion in the third quarter, getting those back-to-back, -back, really three-point plays. What was that like? Um, I mean, it's just a great feeling. Like you know, my team giving me energy, and you know, just getting back into it. It just felt right. You know, like we had to get back into it, get our focus back, and that's exactly what we did. So. Coach Duffy, what about the performance that you saw from Cameron today? You've been talking her up all season long. We knew she was going to deliver. She has delivered, but delivering in a big way today. Man, so proud of her. You know, th this is a kid who just continues to work every day. And, and, and freshman year is so hard, and she, she knows not in her head that there are so many ups and downs. And, you know, when we play Friday, Sunday, you know, Lauren Van Clunen has been so steady inside. You know, she was off a little bit tonight. Here comes Cam coming in with a huge spark. I mean, a double-double machine, finishing around the, the basket, which we needed. We had the advantage in the paint the entire game, and, and plays that Cam made all night, along with Altia Anderson, were, were huge for us. Building on that point, Cameron, that Coach Duffy talked about, it doesn't have to be one player every night. It right. certainly can be. But tonight was your night to be on a team where you can share that responsibility. What's that like? Um, I mean, it's great. Like, we all have trust in each other and trust that if one isn't, you know, having a good game, another one can step up. And we practice every, we practice that every single day. So, um, you know, we know that we're prepared. and Everybody on the team knows that we prepare. We work hard for this. A lot to be proud of for you, Coach Duffy, I know, but three straight wins in the Big East to get on track and taking care of business at home. It's a couple of good opponents in St. John's Friday, Seton Hall here tonight. Things are trending right for Marquette. Absolutely. You know, our, our first three games on the road, who we had to play and the travel is always tough. So to be able to come home and protect our home floor against two teams that were picked top of the league that are extremely athletic and well coached. Um, I, I just thought our toughness and our grit and our execution was was the difference in both games, Friday and Sunday. So it's so really great to get two wins and we'll take a day off tomorrow and collect ourselves. And, uh, you know, school starts tomorrow, too. School so now starts they gotta, tomorrow. Now they got to so switch really out here some class. <laughs> All right, well, well-deserved weekend. Go celebrate, go enjoy with Thank the ladies. You. Marquette taking care of business on its home court today by a final score, 81-60 over Seton Hall to sweep the weekend. For Cameron Taylor, for Coach Megan Duffy, for Kyle Woo! Delabe, and for our fine Big East crew here in Milwaukee, I'm Patrick Reed saying so long, Marquette taking care of business on its home floor against Seton Hall. It's home win number five of the season for the Marquette Golden Eagles. Cameron Taylor, 23 points in an outstanding effort. Marquette can come from behind fashion, winning it over Seton Hall. Good nights from Milwaukee. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic.